Alright, hello. Uh, my name is Mr. David. Um, I'm um, one of the founders of Coronarate, and um, today I will focus on um, how our experiences on uh, building a digital conveyor belt for 3D um, content for production. So our goal is uh, basically yeah to build a factory for um, digital twins and all kinds of products, um, content um, products. So the no matter whether it's um, uh, pictures of digital shoes, for example, or chairs. Um, but we also do animations, GLB files, AR, um, data, and so on. And uh, and we founded when that around 10 years ago. And during this journey, uh, we experienced seven main challenges um, during this time. Um, there have been like hundreds of more challenges uh, because our uh, um, tactic here is more or less like a salami slicing tactic. Um, so we get uh, one um, um, task and then we try to to um, kind of find a good solution for it so that we can scale our 3D content production. Um, very short uh, micro background, I studied architecture in Aachen. So uh, when that started, then also as a 3D real estate uh, visualization company, but, but yeah, very soon after we started, and um, at the networking event, um, we got into uh, contact with a big retailer, the biggest uh, retailer in its, um, in its industry. And um, then we got um, our first um, big, big challenge. We had to produce around 3,500 um, pictures um, within, I think, three months or four months. And um, then we had to um, deliver very soon. And we had just been around um, two founders plus around three artists and this was not really a sustainable way where, where we could produce uh, so much um, content and um, this is why the first reaction uh, was we needed um, designers so a lot of uh, designers because we couldn't build that fast out of nothing like a um, documented um, CGI content pipeline and um, our solution first was for recruiting just for recruiting asking um, designers for the free freelancers around the world and um, to participate, to work for, with us in this work so we could uh, deliver very fast and um, tons of images, um, but this was not enough. And um, since um, then, um, just a few weeks for later, the same project scaled enormously. So it scaled up to we produced at the end something around six to nine million images uh, within three years. Um, and um, then we had um, to find solutions, especially uh, we could not scale with just people because it's kind of possible. And that um, sense, but we needed people um, to produce the main digital trends, the models, we uh, had to um, uh, reuse also back then uh, the photogrammetry and so on to get the first references of the products. Um, this was something uh, we started with um, uh, with wood floors, uh, we had tiles, we had fences, we had screws, we had like everything had to be digitized. And so um, for this we needed the artists, um, but uh, since we didn't have something like an assessment at the very, very beginning, we had also a very um, high churn rate and look within the artist uh, um, a team uh, so we decided uh, not only to build a specialized company for this and this is our subsidiary company the runner that so for creators and um, their goal is just to take care of the for procurement part and uh, to focus only on this uh, we have international recruiters and uh, the main task is to lead all the people through um, um, uh, through all kinds of assessments so that we um, so that we can um, see if these people are right. And this um, um, helped us to reduce um, already for years ago um, the churn rate to 2.5%, um, which is quite amazing. And the next um, uh, step is also with uh, more and more artists. Uh, we had also then more and more um, hours per month. They worked on um, stuff. Um, I will um, share the solution in a second with you. And uh, with 
rising artists, we also needed to, to, to build a team because uh, we scaled this um, this for production team to around 30 people more or less, and um, but we didn't had so many internal teams yet. So we didn't um, we had um, just a project manager, but we didn't had like really um, special specialists for uh, for example QA and um, technical um, pipeline um, supervision and all this stuff, and um, this is why. We then um, we then um, started to uh, then we um, created for specialized units. So of course we needed a product manager, but we also needed the creations, um, tech unique, for the quality assurance, and so on, um, so that we can uh, manage all the stuff. Um, because um, the the requirements from the client side um, also grew. So we um, did not just um, had to handle um, our CGI content for production, but we had also to handle um, partially um, on the client side uh, manufacturers, um, different kind of agencies as well, and because um, some clients just don't want to have all the kind of struggle um, because um, producing um, digital twins might seem easy, um, but there is a lot of communication um, involved. So, um, exactly. So, um, this is why we had also to find somehow a way to manage all the people and all the for projects so over time. Um, we are producing um, thousands of images per month, and all this requires also some kind of uh, um, communication management and so on. So, we started to build um, small microservices. So, microservices, for example, for the external Zucker review and approval part. So, um, so that we can um, get feedback from our clients in a very structured and um, so in a very structured and for streamlined uh, way. But we look, uh, but we use also the same tool for our internal QA um, because um, uh, before we send out something um, to the, uh, the client, um, we make sure that everything is is accordingly um, to um, the specifications we have. Uh, with our client and uh, on the internal part um, when we um, see especially the, the, uh, the beginning of a project where we receive the tasks um, when we are producing around look like, like here a few thousands of Im images per month and look at this means we have also to assign all this task to our people and for this um, we built already two and a half years ago an internal AI supported task uh, management um, task assignment tool uh, which helps us to um, check all the um, skills of our team internal and external teams and look about it also checks um, the tasks um, so from what skills do I need? Um, for example, hard surface, soft surface, and do I need um, like a specialist for like um, a home and living um, product or, or like a fashion um, product uh, or food product and um, all, all these tools uh, and the tool um, then analyzes um, all parameters and then um, suggests um, the um, team member who should work on this and um, the tool has basically just three simple Zucker goals. And so for the first goal is to produce um, the content or the for model uh, within the shortest uh, possible time with the best quality and with um, the least internal correction rounds. And so because we want to avoid also internal correction rounds since um, this is always like um, slowing down the um, pipeline. And I already talked about our review uh, and our simple um, collaboration solution. This is then which I will show you then at the end, which is not public yet on the website, but I will show you uh, later. And this are some um, this are some screenshots of our uh, microservices could we built on the top right. You see the review which we call review. It's an uh, it's a review and approval platform. We built our own because we didn't find a um, solution out there which um, adapted into our system into our pipelines and had all the support for the G. 
GLB files, images, animations, and um, PDFs as well, and so on. But we have also, of course, a Kanban board, our um, pipeline, so for our internal pipeline works more, more or less like a Scrum uh, method, and because we believe also in um, visualize the task for the people since it's easier and, and so nice to see how the task uh, move from left to right. Uh, we have about 27 um, stages, um, so it's for begins um, from the initialized phase where we um, get automatically the, the task um, from our clients. And then we have a checking, um, check references uh, phase if needed. And um, then it um, continues through the modeling, modeling QA, and geometry review, shading, and so on until it ends. And also um, very important or nowadays finally this is more or less for the most important thing we can experience is the reporting part because the brands uh, your clients want to know when can you deliver what kind of um, content piece and um, this is why we set up a, a big um, internal for reporting and um, tool where we can track everything so we um, we're tracking every of um, these small tickets uh, we uh, lock every movement we look every um, kind of uh, matrix we have, I think, about 140, 150 metrics per ticket, which we can analyze and then later uh, use for the optimization um, purposes. Right, um, people had the same uh, topics, right? <laughs> so it's for basically same, same, but for different a little bit. Um, um, standards, uh, when you're producing tons of um, um, tons of assets, you need to standards for your tree, uh, um, team. So um, it starts with a basic, so which software are you using and what are you doing when a client comes and wants to use, for example, um, Cinema 4D, right? And, uh, or for example, SketchUp, or and how do you uh, work with the uh, naming of the conventions? I mean, basically, in our systems, the names don't matter since uh, we are um, having our internal identifier, but on the um, output part or the delivery part, the filing uh, file name con conventions are super important. This is why we um, started to set up a variety of uh, standards. Um, of course, we have also from written standards, which are then legible for all the for team members and for very easily to share with um, the clients and um, our team. Um, but we built also, since we don't want to check every single thing for manually, so because we're, so because we are here optimizing everything. As we mentioned, slice by slice, um, the salami, and um, this is why we also built like an internal um, production plugin for for 3ds Max. Um, now, um, 3ds Max in uh, in, the, in the near future also for, for more tools. And um, what this does is basically this converts the big um, Kanban board into a um, priority list for that um, single artist. The single artist um, knows then what to work on first. Um, it has um, all the briefing information in the file. It ha has for all um, the references. It has for pre um, predecessor um, files as well um, linked and as well as comments like from the client side or from our internal. But it also connects then to our in the render farm, which um, produces then um, content, um, which is then specified for each um, client. Um, but the most important thing is here, uh, what I wanted to talk about is um, it checks for the files, for compatibility, for the standards um, checks since we want to make sure that the, um, the files which are uh, submitted to the um, system um, are really accordingly to the standards so that um, the client or a partner can continue to work with them in the future, exactly. And um, look, we are not a stalking company, but <laughs> internally, but we, um, so, but we need to have some kind of uh, controlling because when you're having like um, hundreds of thousands of the small task and task in your um, pipeline, you need to make sure you don't miss anything. You need to make sure that in some time, you need to also to make sure that it's, uh, for example, when it's in a billing uh, phase and um, that everything is made 
um, correctly and it didn't exceed the, um, the amount um, of times for needed. This is why uh, we also implemented um, um, a variety of um, yeah, data management, um, small tools for microservices, uh, which help us. Um, but um, the main goal um, why we track all this data is to increase our project speed. This is also more or less from, um, my, big, from my biggest hobby, let's say, in a um, company uh, which can make fun and um, just to check the data to see where you can uh, find efficiencies uh, which you can look maybe uh, build for during your small or, or bigger tool to improve the uh, production output. And um, then it helps also all this data gets back into the AI tool, which um, gets then analyzed for the future and um, task assignment um, tool. But it also helps um, um, your product management um, team um, then to approve all the timesheets and make sure um, that we didn't spend too much time on a single um, task. And uh, this is more or less like a red flag uh, warning tool uh, feature. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so um, so far um, I just um, talked about um, on the basics of um, like the 3D um, content for production modeling, shading, creating renderings and so on, but um, of course um, the market is um, growing very quickly and um, the clients also and the consumers live and demand more and more output, more content and, and this is why we had to um, start and invest in tech and people um, so um, we have now I think about 15 different disciplines it starts with the um, 3d artists we have co recruiters but we have also in the active for developers and um, interior designers architects for art directors and so on and so on um, and 15 of these people in your um, developers uh, now are just focused on your internal pipelines exactly and I mentioned um, um, to our clients and the consumers for demand more and more content. So it started when we started like for 10 years ago, it was pretty um, simple on the main company, on the main customer. Um, for example, if uh, we are here on the top left uh, with the bedding uh, um, clients who we have, it started just with two pictures, for example. Um, but nowadays, um, due to um, specifications for platforms like Amazon and so on, they need to produce just more six, seven perspectives and animation and AR look a model and so on and we do not want to work on every single piece for manually and so this is why we enhanced our corona farm and I, I call it here content automation tools um, but um, but it's a render farm so basically with a lot of small tools which do for example automatically um, here on the lower um, part we have assets um, which get then generated um, uh, automatically, so the um, cameras can uh, zoom in, zoom out automatically, so uh, create um, then the pictures and send them to the client um, via API, or we create um, animations for GLBs as well as um, is a standard thing now. So we create for, um, every client gets a GLB file from us for free, and um, but it's also exchanging scenes and combining. As sets as well into a scene um, but this is just the beginning and it's super old now with as of today's um, um, possibilities uh, we will implement we implement uh, way way more uh, soon and we packed all the microservices and more into the Corona Dead Hub which is not public it's um, just for your clients um, yet quite visible so we don't have it on the website and the hub is um, um, our main um, collaboration tool um, because um, here in this audience there are some CGI pioneering companies and brands 
brands, um, but the um, typical common company, um, they don't have CGI specialists. They don't even know what CGI is. So, so we are basically also something like an um, like an educator uh, in this um, topic, and we are trying to convince that CGI is simple. This is our goal. We want to make CGI as simple as possible. We want to take all the hassle out of um, producing CGI's. And um, this is why we combined now everything in a visual tool because we are not commun um, communicating via emails and so on. On and our clients can see on the top image um, they have like uh, this is like their individual shop. So when they have a products list, they can see their production status. When the production status is here green, this means here the the digital twin is ready for content production. No matter whether the super individual and creative, so manually or automated, um, you can then start with your digital twin and create content uh, with us. But you have also metrics, which um, is um, your goal is to implement gamification aspects, so it's fun and they enjoy doing it, but it has also the review collaboration um, parts as well, API connections and all this um, stuff behind. And um, yeah, and now um, we are, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, we think that we won't build this collaboration and content from um, production um, platform alone. And um, this is why we will implement um, soon um, way more uh, features into the hub. So it might be AI features, it might be analyzing uh, features, but also um, further, um, further reporting features um, with partners um, to um, give our clients the most benefit which is possible based on a single digital um, twin yeah and um, also one thing uh, exactly next year we will um, we will publish it and um, give it away also for your agencies so that they can learn from our mistakes and successes in the last for nearly 10 years and use uh, this tool as well thank you, thank you.